Quincy Delight Jones is an American record producer, songwriter, composer, conductor, music arranger, film score composer, musician, trumpeter, film producer, actor, and television producer. His career spans over 72 years, with 28 Grammy Awards one out of 80 nominations and a Grammy Legend Award in 1992. Jones came to prominence in the 1950s as a jazz arranger and conductor before working on pop music and film scores. He moved easily between genres, producing pop hit records for Leslie Gore in the early 1960s and serving as an arranger and conductor for several collaborations between the jazz artists Frank Sinatra and Count Basie. In 1968, Jones became the first African American to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song for The Eyes of Love from the film Banning. Jones was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Score for his work on the 1967 film In Cold Blood, making him the first African American to be nominated twice in the same year. Jones produced three of the most successful albums by pop star Michael Jackson, Off the Wall, 1979, Thriller, 1982, and Bad, 1987. In 1985, Jones produced and conducted the charity song We Are the World, which raised funds for victims of famine in Ethiopia. In 1971, Jones became the first African American to be the musical director and conductor of the Academy Awards. In 1995, he was the first African American to receive the Academy's Gene Hersholt Humanitarian Award. He is tied with sound designer Willie D. V. Burton as the second most Oscar nominated African American, with seven nominations each. In 2013, Jones was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as the winner, alongside Lou Adler, of the Ahmet Erdogan Award. He was named one of the most influential jazz musicians of the 20th century by time. Jones has an estimated net worth of $500 million. Jones has earned most of his wealth from songwriting, directing and producing in a career that has spanned for over six decades. Jones owns many real estate properties. He owns a house in Chicago, Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, New York, and many more. In December 1986, Quincy paid $3 million for a home in Bel Air. He sold this property in 2005 for $5.4 million after completing construction on a 25,000-square-foot compound, also in Bel Air. This house today is easily worth $25 to $30 million. Quincy Jones has a very huge collection of cars, which mostly includes cars of his generation. Quincy Jones loves classic cars, and has many, including Chevrolet, Ford, Mercedes, Aston Martin, Jaguar. He also owns some of the newer ones like Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, and Audi. Jones never learned to drive, citing his involvement in a car crash at age 14 as the reason. Jones has won a lot of awards including, Honorary Doctorate of Music from Berklee College of Music in 1983, Golden Plate Award of the American Academy of Achievement presented by Awards Council member Ray Charles in 1984. Grammy Legend Award in 1992, he is third in the list of all-time Grammy Award wins, Garfield High School in Seattle named a performing arts center after him, Quincy Jones Elementary School, located in South Central Los Angeles, is named after him, Humanitarian Award at the BET Awards in 2008, John F. Kennedy Center Honors in 2001. National Medal of Arts from President Barack Obama on March 2, 2011, Los Angeles Press Club Visionary Award in 2014, Honorary Doctorate from the Royal Academy of Music. London, in 2015, Ahmet Erdogan Award into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2013, in 2021, Jones was inducted into the Black Music and Entertainment Walk of Fame as a foundational inductee. Quincy Delight Jones Jr. was born in the south side of Chicago, Illinois on March 14, 1933, the elder of two sons to Sarah Francis, a bank officer and apartment complex manager, and Quincy Delight Jones, a semi-professional baseball player and carpenter from Kentucky. Jones's family moved to Chicago during the Great Migration. Jones had a younger brother, Lloyd, who was an engineer for the Seattle television station Como TV until his death in 1998. Jones was introduced to music by his mother, who always sang religious songs, and next-door neighbor Lucy Jackson. When Jones was five or six, Jackson played stride piano next door, and he would listen through the walls. Jackson recalled that after he heard her one day, she could not get him off her piano. When Jones was young, his mother had a schizophrenic breakdown and was sent to a mental institution. His father divorced her and married Elvira Jones, 
who already had three children of her own, Waymond, Teresa, and Catherine. Elvira and Quincy Sr. later had three children together, Jeanette, Margie, and Richard. In 1943, the family moved to Bremerton, Washington, Jones's father took a wartime job at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. After the war, the family moved to Seattle, where Jones attended Garfield High School and developed his skills as a trumpeter and arranger. At age 14, Jones introduced himself to 16-year-old Ray Charles after watching him play at the Black Elks Club in 1951, Jones earned a scholarship to Seattle University. After one semester, he transferred to what is now the Berklee College of Music in Boston on another scholarship. There, he played at Izzy Ort's Bar and Grill with Bunny Campbell and Preston Sandiford, whom he cited as important influences. He left his studies after receiving an offer to tour as a trumpeter, arranger, and pianist with bandleader Lionel Hampton and embarked on his professional career. On the road with Hampton, he displayed a gift for arranging songs. He moved to New York City, where he received freelance commissions writing arrangements for Charles. Jones is a believer in astrology. In 1974, Jones developed a life-threatening brain aneurysm, leading to a decision to reduce his workload to spend time with his friends and family. Since his family and friends believed Jones's life was coming to an end, they started to plan a memorial service for him. He attended his own service with his neurologist by his side, in case the excitement overwhelmed him. Jones has been married three times and has seven children. He was married to Jerry Caldwell from 1957 to 1966, and they had a daughter named Jolie Jones born in 1953 she is 69 years. He had a brief affair with Carol Reynolds, and they had a daughter named Rachel Jones born July 23, 1963 she is 59 years. He was later married to Swedish actress Ola Andersson from 1967 to 1974, and they had a daughter named Martina who is 56 years and a son named Quincy 354 years, who also became a music producer. The day after his divorce from Anderson, Jones married American actress Peggy Lipton. They had two daughters, Kid Ada, 49 years and Rashida, 47 years both of whom became actors. Jones and Lipton divorced in 1989. He later dated and lived with German actress Nastasia Kinski from 1991 to 1995, and they had a daughter named Kenya, who became a fashion model, she is 30 years old. Professional career. In 1953, age 20, Jones traveled with jazz band leader Lionel Hampton for a European tour of the Hampton Orchestra. In early 1956, Jones accepted a temporary job at CBS stage show hosted by Jimmy and Tommy Dorsey on January, February and March, Jones played second trumpet in the studio band that supported 21-year-old Elvis Presley in his first six television appearances, Jones went on tour of the Middle East and South America sponsored by the United States Information Agency. After returning, he signed a contract with ABC Paramount and started his recording career as the leader of his band. In 1957, he moved to Paris, where he studied composition and theory with Nadia Boulanger and Olivier Messiaen and performed at the Paris Olympia. He became music director at Barclay, a French record company and the licensee for Mercury in France. During the 1950s, Jones toured Europe with several jazz orchestras. As musical director of Harold Arlen's jazz musical Free and Easy, he took to the road again. A European tour closed in Paris in February 1960. With musicians from the Arlen show, he formed his big band The Jones Boys with 18 musicians. The band included double bass player Eddie Jones and trumpeter Reunal Jones. The band toured North America and Europe. In 1961, Jones was promoted as the vice president of Mercury. During the same year, at the invitation of director Sidney Lumet, he composed music for The Pawnbroker in 1964. Following the success of The Pawnbroker, Jones left Mercury and moved to Los Angeles. After composing film scores for Mirage and The Slender Thread in 1965, he was in constant demand as a composer. In 1975, he founded Q West Productions, for which he arranged and produced successful albums by Frank Sinatra and others. In 1978, he produced the soundtrack for The Wiz, the musical adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, which starred Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. In 1982, he produced Jackson's Thriller, the best-selling album in history of the music industry. His 1981 album The Dude yielded the hits A.I. No Corita, a remake of a song by Chaz Jankel, Just Once, and 100 Ways, both sung by James Ingram. 
marking Jones's debut as a film producer, 1985's The Color Purple received 11 Oscar nominations that year, including one for Jones's score. Through this picture, Jones is credited with introducing Whoopi Goldberg and Oprah Winfrey to film audiences around the world. After the 1985 American Music Awards ceremony, Jones used his influence to draw most of the major American recording artists of the day into a studio to record the song, We Are the World, to raise money for the victims of famine in Ethiopia. In 1986, he started off Q West Entertainment to produce theatrical feature films, through Quest Film and Television, and launched a home video label. In 1990, Quincy Jones Productions joined with Time Warner to create Quincy Jones Entertainment. The company signed a 10-picture deal with Warner Brothers and a two-series deal with NBC Productions' now Universal Television. The television show The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was completed in 1990, but producers of In the House rejected its early concept stages. Jones produced it. In 2001, Jones published his autobiography, The Autobiography of Quincy Jones. On July 31, 2007, he partnered with Wizard Media to start the Quincy Jones video podcast. The first episode features him in the studio producing I Knew I Loved You for Celine Dion. In 2017, Jones and French producer Reza Akbarali started Q West TV, the world's first subscription video on demand service for jazz and eclectic music from around the world. The platform features a hand picked selection of ad free concerts, interviews, documentaries, and exclusive, original content, all in HD or 4K. In 2010, Jones, along with brand strategist Chris Vance, co-founded Playground Sessions, a New York City-based developer of subscription software that teaches people to play the piano using interactive videos. Quincy Jones first worked with Frank Sinatra in 1958 when invited by Princess Grace to arrange a benefit concert at the Monaco Sporting Club. Six years later, Sinatra hired him to arrange and conduct Sinatra's second album with Count Basie. It Might As Well Be Swing, 1964. Jones worked with Michael Jackson as a producer on Off the Wall, 1979, Thriller, 1982, and Bad, 1987. On March 20, 2020, Jones guest starred on a music video by Travis Scott and Young Thug for the song Out West. In January 2022, Jones appeared on the album Dawn FM by Canadian singer The Weeknd, performing a monologue in the sixth track, A Tale by Quincy. Quincy Jones owns Quest Records, Epic Records, a and Records, Warner Brothers, Warner Records, and Mercury Records. Jones's social activism began in the 1960s with his support of Martin Luther King. Jones is one of the founders of the Institute for Black American Music, whose events aim to raise enough funds for the creation of a national library of African American art and music. Jones is also one of the founders of the Black Arts Festival in his hometown of Chicago. He is the founder of the Quincy Jones Listen Up Foundation, a nonprofit organization that built more than 100 homes in South Africa and which aims to connect youths with technology, education, culture, and music. In 2004, Jones helped launch the We Are the Future project, which gives children in poor and conflict ridden areas a chance to live their childhoods and develop a sense of hope. The program is the result of a strategic partnership between the Global Forum, the Quincy Jones Listen Up Foundation, and Hani Masri with the support of the World Bank, UN agencies, and major companies. Jones supports a number of other charities, including the NAACP, GLAAD, Peace Games, AMFAR, and the Maybach Foundation. He serves on the advisory board of Health Corps. In 2001, Jones became an honorary member of the board of directors of the Jazz Foundation of America. He worked with the foundation to save the homes and lives of America's elderly jazz and blues musicians, including those who survived Hurricane Katrina. Jones is a spokesperson for the Global Down Syndrome Foundation, co-founded by his friend John C., which annually awards the Quincy Jones Exceptional Advocacy Award. He is also involved in the Linda Krinick Institute, improving the lives of people with Down syndrome through advanced biomedical research. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and click on the bell notification for more.